<laughs> I did that just for fun. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, I've got a new friend on the line. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but looking through some of his stuff, he's going to be talking about some stuff that's regarded like email, which email is kind of like the way to communicate these days and for a while. His name is Ed. Is it Porto? Very good, Brad. Awesome. You nailed it. <laughs> I had a friend that his name was, uh, it looked like his last name was Fortune, but it was Fontaine is the way he pronounced it. It was really weird. That'll throw you off. We used to call him Ed Fountain because his <laughs> name looked like that. Anyway, <laughs> what, what part of the world are you in there, Ed? In Kalamazoo, Michigan. Michigan, that's how you do it, right? So you're somewhere around here? There you go, yeah, there you, there there you go, I exactly. You, from Michigan, you got it. Right? <laughs> they whip out their there. hand and start pointing to it. Well, you gotta do that. It's, it gives you some kind of frame of reference. It does, it does. How long, how long have you lived there? We've been here now, let's see, 18, 18 oh, years. Yeah. Roots. Who, who's we? You married and got kids and all that stuff? Yep, yep. After my wife and I had our first and only child, we realized we were living in Michigan. And uh, we realized after, I don't know, maybe four months that this child was going to be more than we could handle. And so we moved <laughs> down here to be closer to family so we can get some group help. It's good to be close to family. Um, I had a similar situation. I lived in the same house for 53 years and met my wife. We moved to the west side, lived there for three years and thought, let's try something new. Moved out to Asheville, North Carolina. Did that for a couple of years, three years. And then said, let's go back home. <laughs> so the there you are. are. That's the way it works. Well, thanks for being on my little Magic Brad show here for this uh, little Zoom. It's a uh, thank God for Zoom since the COVID thing, huh? <laughs> True. So now that we know a little about you, let's talk a little bit about your business. And I looked at it, it's about, um, it's an interesting topic because I was just thinking about this the other day. When people send out these emails to people, the only way they know they got delivered is if the person calls them up and says, hey, I got your email the other day. Because they don't really know. <laughs> no, you don't. You think you do. You think when you push send that it is going to be delivered. But more often than not, depending upon how you're sending it, it may not get delivered. Well, doesn't and it have to go through a lot of computers and there's a lot of different firewalls and stuff and there's a lot of things it goes through? Yeah, the, the journey of an email is interesting. I don't know if you remember the old Schoolhouse Rock videos. Uh, my favorite one was um, I'm Just a Bill. I don't know if you remember that one or not. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of fun. It talks you, talks you through the journey of a bill and an email goes through somewhat of a similar journey. So it starts off with you writing the email and then you push send. It then goes from your ESP or your mailbox provider, if you're sending it personally, or an ESP if you're sending a group email. And then from there, it goes to an STFP, uh, which is kind of a sort, sorting house. And then from there, it goes to the recipient's mailbox providers like Gmail, Outlook, AOL, uh, Hotmail. And that's when they sort things. And this is an area where things get a little confusing because that's considered delivered. Now the email is delivered once it gets to your recipient's mailbox provider. It hasn't reached the recipient yet, but it's gotten to their, uh, if you use like a mail term, it's gotten to their uh, post office. And then from there, it's sorted, it's checked, it's sorted. And then if it passes all the checks, it looks at the authentication to make sure it is sending, it's the person who sent it is actually the one actually authorized to send the email. It looks at the subject line to make sure it isn't spammy. It looks at the content to make sure there isn't any spammy content. It looks at the links to make sure there aren't any bad links or, or viruses in the links. It makes sure that the ISP that it's come, the IP that it's coming from isn't blacklisted. It makes sure the domain isn't blacklisted. Once it passes all those checks, then it's forwarded to the uh, recipient's email and it's looked at it e as either, as either um, spam and so then it goes in the spam folder or promotional it goes in a promotional folder it goes ah you know what this is regular mail that this person was looking for we're going to put it in the regular uh, promotion uh, regular primary email folder so it, it, you don't know where it's going to land or if it's even going to get blocked and not even forwarded 
And for the basic person that does not, knows nothing about this, they just want to send the email, they have no clue of all these different possible obstacles. Like you mentioned spam. Who's the person that can decide whether it's spam or not? It's always been kind of weird that you're supposed to have unsolicited email is spam. How can you send an email without soliciting something? You can't just send it to them. You have to somehow get them to say it's okay, but for them to get to say it's okay, they have to solicit you to say it. So it's hard to. Right. Well, you know, the thing is, I, I was talking to somebody else about this the other day, and the, the thing about the platforms that we use, the social platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, we were just talking about Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, those platforms weren't built to, to, to do business. They were built to be social interaction between one friend and another and building friendships and relationships, one-to-one -one communication. The same thing is true for email. It was built for one-to-one -one communication. And none of the platforms like any type of automation. They don't want their platforms to be used for business. They don't want their platforms to be used to scale and automation. So they, they tend to look at those things when someone's trying to use automation a little bit more critically. And if you're, especially business email, because most business email accounts are used to, to email one to many people. And when they detect that, then they just decide, okay, this looks like there's a lot of these emails going out. It looks like it's promotional. We're going to put it in the promotional folder. Or a lot of these emails have been going out and quite a few people haven't opened these emails. Or some people have said these are spam. They didn't request the email. So now we're going to take all the emails from either the IP or the domain and put them into the spam folder or some of them. And each mailbox provider has a different criteria. So for example, your emails may reach Outlook, but in Gmail, they may go to spam or in uh, Hotmail, they may go to, to the regular folder or in AOL, they may go to spam or uh, Yahoo, they may go to spam. And for those that don't know, what your business does is helps people get that stuff delivered because, I mean, there's no point in spending all this time, creative copywriting, making it look nice, pushing that send button and then chirp, chirp. It, uh, it's very frustrating. And again, people don't know if it didn't get delivered. How do you know if it did? Because I've gotten those little alerts where all of a sudden it pops up and says, you know, Tammy opened your email. And I go, you know, it's 1.30 in the morning. I don't think Tammy opened my email, but it says she did. So I don't, but it doesn't seem real. Yeah, sometimes if you're sending one-to-one -one emails, you get those kind of false positives that the email was delivered and you're not quite sure. Maybe you got that sinking <laughs> feeling, maybe it wasn't delivered. But it really happens on a more escalated scale when you're sending business email using automation, using uh, well, like uh, constant ESP. contact. And Con it constant contact, like right, correct. Correct. And when we are working with people, they'll think, almost everyone thinks, well, my emails are getting delivered because my ESP, email service provider like, AO, uh, like AWeber or Casa Contact, says they have a 99% delivery rate or 99.9% .9 delivery rate. And that's where it goes back to del delivery means it's been delivered to your mailbox providers, uh, your recipient's mailbox provider, but not to the actual recipient. Deliverability right. means it's inboxed to the recipient. And you have to know that subtle difference between the two and understand the ESPs really, their, their job is done once it is delivered to, their, to the recipient's mailbox provider. So it's kind of like it, it got to the apartment building, but it didn't get inside the apartment. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Little, little lobby right there pushing the button, you're not getting in the door, yeah. Exactly. It's interesting stuff, because it, it's almost, a, you're in a very, cool position to be able to help people get that information delivered. And that might be a big situation right now where a lot of people are struggling through their businesses and even personal stuff. Like, like some of these providers, how can they claim this 99.9% .9 delivery rate when it's not really being delivered? And I don't know, how do they feel good about doing something like that? There must be a big difference between using a constant contact or a Weber, or there's a zillion of them or setting up your own thing, kind of like what Hillary, Hillary Clinton did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a private feeling, server. Yeah, you almost feel like you should do that instead of dealing with these people that are blocking stuff. 
Yeah, well, that can be an option for people to set up their private server. You really don't know. Like going back to what you, you asked about the ESP saying, how can they say it's a 99.9% .9 delivery rate? They feel, and, and it's true, their responsibility is to get the mail to the, the other mailbox, the, the recipient's mailbox provider. And they really don't have any control over what happens after that because each mailbox provider has their own set of rules on what's delivered, what's blocked, what, and, and, and it could be blocked even before it gets to the mailbox provider or where they deliver it, who do they deliver it to, where, what box it's put in, whether it's promotional or spam or the primary inbox. And those are the things that we talk to clients about because almost everyone believes that all of their email is being delivered. If you talk to most people, unless they can see a big massive drop off in their open rate, they think everything's fine. And a lot of our clients that, that come to us, they just are kind of curious about whether their delivery is okay. And they get to us and they see, wow, only half of my emails are getting there. I, I had no idea. Yeah. If that. You know, the, yeah. That's a very yeah. interesting expertise. Um, it's almost like, you know, how complicated SEO is. That's a jungle in and of itself. I don't even want to play in that world. But the whole email stuff is very, very intriguing that people don't even realize that a lot of the stuff is not getting through. Um, another thing I was going to bring up, I just had a little flash in and out. I forgot what it was. I'll have to deal with it later. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. I had another question there. But, um, it had something to do with the whole spam thing. It's weird. Who determines that? Um, I heard a story early on where there was a guy that was a... Um, what do they call that when they help people with their uh, mail parts? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about. He, he uh, used the word penis. <laughs> that's his business, <laughs> right? And that was a banned word. You can't be using that kind of stuff. So there's firewalls that are blocking stuff like that. So he had yeah. a hard time with his getting getting stuff through because he was using a word. Who makes those rules? Well, those are kind of general wor words, um, spam words that are out there and pretty much all the mailbox providers kind of use those same words as filters to determine whether or not something's spam or not. And the reason that they do that is because there's a lot of people that are sending spam emails. Most people don't know this, but there's over 300 billion emails sent every single day, which is I was I was just going to, I remembered my issue and it was if there's all this spam protection that they're telling me that I need to comply with this, that, and all this stuff as a business sending out email and I have to comply, how come I'm still getting spam? Yeah, the, well, with the 300 billion emails that are sent, 90% of that is spam. So How's 270 that? billion emails every day are spam. And in fact, that number has been higher since COVID. So, so they have- not working. Well, the, part of the problem is that the, it's kind of like uh, the, the old days when we had uh, radar detectors. We'd get a radar detector and then the, the cops would get better radar yes. and we'd get a better radar detector. That's this game that keeps going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Same thing, same yes, thing sir. with the, the mailbox providers and the spammers. But because there's so much spam, and most emails that are sent are spam, they have to have hypersensitive fil hyper filters to block things and this, the regular people aren't playing that that game with, with the radar detector trying to somehow get over speeding. They're following the rules, but the spammers aren't. And unfortunately, we get caught in the middle of that because we're not keeping up with all the filters and the regulations and the, and the security that's going on. And really right now, security is the most important thing that you have to deal with with, um, with email. If you think about uh, nowadays, you go to almost any site, if you go to a banking site, if you go to your uh, uh, cell phone site, if you go to uh, almost, well, most sites where they're collecting any information, there's this two levels of in encrypted security. You, you go in, you, you put in your email address, and then you may have to put in uh, a code. They'll send you a text and you have to put the code in in order to get into the website. And they don't do that just because uh, they're having fun or they just think, oh, let's come up with an idea of, of making it more secure. They've had breaches, a lot of them. And so they've had to put in additional security measures. The problem with email, it hasn't kept up with the, 
the security measures that websites have. And so it's slowly catching up, but it is a bit complicated. And because you've got so many different mailbox providers that, that do different things, they have different languages, you have a lot of different email service providers like AOL, Constant Contact, they have different rules, they do things differently, they have different language that they use. Nobody's speaking the same language. And because yeah. of that, there's, there's so many things that slip through the cracks and there's so many emails that get blocked because I followed, a, for example, you've got, we were just talking about my contact page having an error that you have to go back and fix. So I've got a contact form. A lot of people have those. Those are connect, that's connected to your email account. Right. You have your AWeber account. That's connected to the email account. Maybe you send out proposals or uh, invoices that are connected to your email account. So now you have security measures for all three of those, and they have to be set up so that all of them are talking to one another. So when an when email comes in, it passes all the security checks for all of the things you have it connected to. And if one thing's off, if for some reason my um, invoicing app isn't properly uh, authenticated, it will affect all the other emails that I send. And we've seen that time and time again. People don't even realize it, that some of their emails are going to spam or some of them are blocked. They have no idea. And it's because we have so many things connected to our email account and we don't even realize it. So it's kind of like the United States Postal Service. If the zip code is 5532, 55432, and all of a sudden you find out all those are 55431, they ain't gonna get to where it's gonna go. Right, right. So this is, how, how long have you been learning and studying all this stuff? Uh, it's been over a year. And the reason that I got involved with this, because I've been doing email since 1998 uh, and using autoresponders. So I was very comfortable with this stuff, but I wasn't aware of all the changes that occurred. Right. And, Email is a really, really effective method for prospecting. Um, oh, it is. It's, you, it's, you dug in really deep. To yeah, what's yeah. Going on with it because some people, it's it's almost like I uh, use the analogy of the postal service again. It's a matter of just writing a letter, putting a stamp on it with the address, and sending it over to your friend. You're looking at what kind of glue is on the stamp. What kind of pen did you use? Was there a spring in it? What color was it? How much pressure did you put on? You're putting a lot of detail. <laughs> a lot of, it, lot of detail. And, and most people don't go through that detail. But one of the things about email, when I was looking at, for, what, for reasons I won't get into, I was having to rebuild my business. Uh, we, we had some problems. We had to start all over again. Kind of like what you were, when we were talking earlier, when you, your, your Facebook account, you had the problem with that and had to start all over again. Yeah. We, we did the same thing. So I was looking at different ways to, to prospect. And Facebook can be, a lot of people use Facebook, but it can be such hit and miss. And we do a lot of Facebook campaigns for people. And I know that you have to spend a fair amount of money just to find out if the ad's going to work. And it's I, a bidding war. It is. And, and if you can, and if you find the right combination, the right ad, the right copy, the right landing page, everything's got to line up perfectly for it to work. But email is very, very forgiving. And one study that I found with, I think it was McKenzie and company, found that email is 40 times more effective than social media at acquiring new customers, which is incredible. 40 times more effective. Well, it makes sense because it's a direct connect rather than a, right. a plethora of who knows what else is going to get in your way when you're trying to read your social media page between right. ads and people's opinions and... Yeah, and, and you can get into that one-on-one -on -one communication a lot faster with, with email. It's so almost like talking one-on-one -on -one instead of going to a party and going, hey, how are you doing? We should go to the game on Tuesday <laughs> in a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Well, I, I decided to, to set up an email prospecting system. I, there was an ESP, a very established ESP that had a beta program for this, this testing, for this email program. It sent out emails, it sent out uh, voicemail drops, it sent out text messages, and it all in one, under one roof. And I thought, well, this is really slick. So I took the time to set up the email campaign. It was a seven email sequence, a little bit long for cold email, but uh, I wanted to test it. I, before I took it live, I set up, oh, I had seven email accounts of my own that I wanted to just send the emails out to. So, oops, I fired those emails out and 
seven days later, there was nothing in my inbox. There were, those emails were nowhere to be found. They weren't in my spam folder. They weren't in my regular folder. They were just weren't there. I think they thought there was one. So out of 49 emails total sent over seven days, there was only one email that showed up. So I call the, the, uh, the ESP and I say, hey, what's going on? The delivery is, is terrible. Like, you're supposed to actually deliver the emails to the inbox. And they go, well, they, let's look into it. And they got back to me and they said, well, the emails went out. And I go, yes, so? Uh, it, but they, and that was their end of their responsibility. So yeah. I'm thinking like, why is that the case? So that's when I really dug in. I ended up meeting this guy who is uh, the lead analyst uh, for uh, the deliverability department at a major ESP and he educated me. He showed me what was going on, how to do things, how to make sure that the, that your, um, your DNS records are properly set up, which is the reason why the emails didn't get delivered. And it was, it, it seems simple because all the ESPs give you instructions on how to set up your email for their uh, uh, accounts, mm -hmm. but they don't take into account that that's the, not the only thing that you have connected to your email address. Yeah. You, they don't take into account that you have billing maybe and you've got um, maybe another ESP that you're using and maybe you're using a contact form. And if any one of those things aren't properly configured, everything gets thrown off. Well, I know. Um, that's I what was, happened. I was uh, sending an email to my wife and uh, we were in the same room and she didn't get it. And I thought, what the heck's going on with that? So I decided to analyze <laughs> it. And I sort of uh, reverse engineered it. Turns out that it was this, I live in Minneapolis and the area code is 612. I put it in parentheses. That's what was preventing it to go from going through. Really? Wow. 612 in parentheses. So ah, I had to okay. change that and get rid of the parentheses and just do it with dashes and stuff. So you never know what it is that's stopping it from going through. Maybe that was a you know. coding situation or something with the parentheses. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I had a similar problem when I sent a file to someone. Um, I put the, I named it as an email address because it just like it was easier for me to, to uh, categorize it. And I didn't think about it. And then I tried to send the file. It was just a normal notepad file. It wasn't anything special. And it just kept kicking it back. And I'm like, what is wrong? Why can't I send this file? Right. Well, because I used an email address, it created a program instead of making it a plain notepad <laughs> file. And it would not allow me to send that email. Well, it's and it's really little things like that that can cause problems for people. You're a good person to know if a person wants to actually communicate. <laughs> yeah, it, a lot of people don't realize that if you just look at delivery first without changing anything else, people want to change the subject line and the copy and uh, maybe they'll work on their ad. We can go in and just fix the deliverability. And you, usually people are somewhere in that 50 to 60% range and or people, most people think it's 100%, but the average is somewhere between 50 to 60% you know, and these... change it just a little bit. Some of these people uh, that do, do the online marketing and affiliate marketing and things like that, that I'm getting into, they talk about the money's in the list. And they got these lists of like 100, 200, 500,000 people that they're paying for, because you know how the scaling that scales yep, up with yep. the, the pricing. They got to pay a lot of money for it. A lot of it's not being delivered. I think they could help. Uh, how does your business work? Do you have like consultation? Do you got classes? Do you take on prod, uh, projects and manage? Well, or? We, we typically will take a look. The first step is that we'll just look at your email deliverability. We, we run a couple of tests and then it's very eye opening because we'll, we'll tell you, or, you know, this is, this is how many, what the percentage is of your emails are actually hitting the inbox and which inboxes they're hitting. You're hitting, uh, you're, you're getting into the promotional mailbox in Gmail. You're getting into the spam mailbox of Outlook. And that happens more often than not for most people. And then we'll fix that. We'll get their emails out of the promotional box. We'll get the emails out of the spam folder. And just by doing that alone, uh, where we go some, for say, let's say 60% inboxing to 80%. So that's a 20% increase. Mm -hmm. And then when they look at their bottom line, they're seeing the profits almost double just because we did that. And you can't really, you don't see that type of an increase. You don't see a doubling 
tripling of revenue. Well, I can imagine that fast. You would because some people say that uh, your basic uh, it's worth a dollar per contact in your list. So if you got five thousand people in your list, you should make bacon five thousand dollars. Well, if none of it's being delivered, then that's zero. But if you can, you know, scale it up and get eighty percent opening it, you can reach that. Right, amount. right. So that makes a lot of sense. So. I would like to maybe do some more of these. This is intriguing to me because email is communication and, the, and a lot of people are using it. And I think a lot of uh, crickets are going, chirp, chirp, where's the, where's the email you sent me? And yeah. No, no. There could be uh, a lot of problems if you've sent an email to somebody, mm -hmm. especially if you've got a contract you're sending and you're wondering, well, how come they haven't signed it? They said they're all ready to go and what's going on? Well, and the person on the other side is saying, I want to get started. Why haven't you sent the contract yet? And that's happened quite choir. a bit. Reach into the choir. I, I'm frustrated as heck sometimes. I'm wondering, what, how come I'm not getting the response back? You know, I'm sending her stuff. So th this is, you're the first person I've ever met that's got this specialty is your is it a common thing or are you like uh, <laughs> there <laughs> oh, with the hat uh there there are other people that do it. it it's amazing to me that we're although my business partner and the team that we have they they work for an esp he's worked for the esp for seven years oh, eight years now he sees millions of emails every day he's constantly helping his clients and tweaking things but we get a lot of people that teach this stuff that ask us questions and consult with us just because they're having deliverability problems or they just can't figure out what's going on with one of their clients delivery problems. So we work with a lot of different people. It's anyone who really is it uses email on a, on a business level that depends on it to make revenue, whether it's 10% or 100% of your revenue are, are people that we work with. Wouldn't you say that's like everybody? <laughs> Close to pretty much everybody that, that's in business that's online. Yeah, pretty much. And I've been even non-business, I suppose, people want the stuff delivered when you send your you know, your grandkids an email and they don't get it. Grandma, yeah, how come you're ignoring me? <laughs> the the oh. good thing is, the good thing is, Brad, most people that send personal email, if you've got a regular Gmail account or an Earthlink account or a Hotmail account, that email is going to go and most likely going to be delivered. Oh, to yeah. You friend. mentioned that it's the broadcast stuff that. Uh, yeah, it's issues. the broadcast and the business email addresses. That's kind of the red flag that the mailbox providers look at. This is a business email oh. address. We got to scrutinize this email a lot closer. Well, Ed, this has been entertaining and educational and it's a, uh, it's very interesting to me because um, I, like I said, I've always kind of wondered that I try and keep stuff simple in the, Simple part about it is I'm trying to send you something. You should get it. You know, <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. Makes sense to me, but there are a lot of moving parts. So the way I do these is I will uh, take this recording and put a little intro outro on it and then beam it up to the internet. And then uh, I'll send you the file of it. And if you want to share it out to yours, that would be appreciated. And we'll try. I would be happy little. and delighted to do that. It's a very interesting. Uh, industry because there are people that niche and they're the experts on some stuff but this is one that i have not seen and i've been online since netscape remember that oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah always i remember the <laughs> old modems where you put the phone in the little rubber things and yeah uh, i was <laughs> using a modem well it's been a while but 20 20 years ago we were using dial-up and it's kind of fascinating that it hasn't been that long that the internet has been launched. It was just in the 90s, right? Yeah, it's, it's very, relatively very, very new, new still. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, Ed, if you want to stay on, we'll have another conversation. Other than that, I'm going to shut off the recording and then sure. we're beaming it up. I appreciate sure. you taking the time. So before we go, oh, thank you. how do we get a hold of you? What's your website domain name that I'll put in the video? I'll, I'll give you two. You can go to emailopenrateoptimization.com and learn all about us there. If you want to know how to make sure that all your emails are delivered to the primary inbox and avoid the promotional inbox of Gmail, you can go to higheropenrates.com forward slash Brad, and you can, I'll, you'll get a 28 point checklist on how to get your, your emails inbox to the primary inbox in Gmail. Perfect. And if you could uh, shoot me an email with those URLs in there, I will put them in this, uh, in the YouTube. Awesome. Okay. Stick around, Ed. Uh, we'll have another conversation. Other than that, peace, love, and happiness. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing your expertise. Thank you, Brad.